Welcome back to What RT Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the 105 Le FH 18B2, the French Tier 5 Premium SPG, also known as Fifi La Pew Pew, and uh, also known as a Leffy or a Leaf Blower. This one is on the Westbourne of Airfield, and it's under the command of Rollman. Game's taking a little while to start, and it's underway. Okay. Well, you can see well, Rollman's got one mark of excellence on his barrel already, so he's played the VP quite a lot. Now, it's a Tier 5 French SPG, but it's a premium. In fact, there's only two premium SPGs in the game, the Sexton and, of course, this one. I don't know why he fired that, because it wasn't aimed at all, but there you go. It's based on the Char B1 tank. The Germans captured rather a lot of them in France uh, after the Battle of France and they decided what uh, they were going to do with them. Um, they turned some of them into flamethrower tanks, others into artillery like this and in fact only 16 of them were actually turned into uh, to artillery and a few of them were actually converted into uh, heavy tanks which the Germans would use. The problem with the Char B1 was it was very good at withstanding shells from German tanks but uh, it wasn't that great at withstanding shots from Soviet tanks um, or wouldn't have been. He's just got a hit on that T1 heavy. Nice penetration he managed to get but 492 and the target's being killed by our Skoda T24. Now it's a 105mm gun, the light field howitzer, which was the most produced artillery piece by the Germans during the war, made by Rheinmetall. Oh, he actually aimed for the Largo, but he actually hit the Electo behind him and took that guy out of the game. Well, it just goes to show, sometimes it can be a very bad decision sitting next to a, a tree in a thunderstorm. And he just took out the Largo as well, so he's now got two kills in the game and a fair amount of damage. Now this is another of the replays from way, way, way back. I think this one, if I remember correctly, is from 2018, but early 2018, something like January or February. Dialing in on the Panzer Fiat-Ausrung H, rounds out, and a direct hit penetrates him and wipes him out. Yep, you're going to be seeing a lot of pens because back then, Artie did pen targets. Especially this RT because, of course, it was a premium RT. Nowadays, it's very unlikely you'll see any pens. In fact, even with the changes Wargaming have made to introduce new premium uh, armor-piercing rounds into most of the higher-tier RT, uh, you won't get pens simply because RNG means you won't hit the target. That one hit the gorilla and wiped him out. Okay, so he's got 30 rounds of HE left and he's looking for... Another target to the south. He thinks the enemy RT might be in that region. He's got five kills. One more and he gets a top gun. And he fires a snapshot at that M3 Lee. Can he get another shot? An accurate one into him. He's lined up. Rounds out. Oh yes, another kill. And that's a top gun. You notice how he dials in very, very quickly on the enemy. And I think that's because he's a very good player. Um, that was a bit of a snapshot, and that missed by a mile. There's the, it's the Panzer Sebsfalafeta Fear B, or Grasshopper, and it is no more. That's seven kills. There's only two enemies remaining, and one of them's a Hetzer, and that snapshot failed. But if he dials in, he should be able to get this guy. Rounds out. Nope, missed him. He obviously moved. And he didn't get that one. The track was destroyed on the Hetzer, so he obviously got some benefit from that shot. But there's only one enemy left. It's a T28E with the F-30 gun. That's the premium Tier 4 Soviet medium tank. The one with the big 85mm gun. But it's got very thin armour. Rounds out. Long flight time. Goes long. Okay, let it dial in before you shoot. And you should get a hit and possibly a pen. Note that one hit the rock face. Try it again. Rounds out. He's going to miss this one. Lands right in front of him, but it looks like it might have tracked him. Go for the kill. Yes! 
wins the game with that shot and picks up a Radley Waters to boot. So that's the end of the first replay. We've got two more to come. The second replay is on the Karelia map. Same arty, but uh, a new player. Chrissy Oscar. Uh, yeah, we'll just call him Oscar, shall we? <laughs> that makes it simple. <laughs> okay, the game started, but he's not moving yet. Uh, it's a standard match on Karelia. It's tier 6 game with tier 5 tanks in it. But uh, there are tier 4 tanks in this one as well. Now it's quite slow this RT, 28 kilometers an hour, it's not fast, but it is based on the speed of the Char B1. And of course it did have a lot of weight on top because that was an RT piece and it was up high on the vehicle, normally where the turret was. And well, the 105mm light field howitzer is not a light object, it's actually quite a heavy object, much heavier than the turret that you normally find on a Char B1 because it's normally a tall a small turret and it normally has a big main gun a 75 millimeter gun on that tank uh, but instead it's got this huge 105 millimeter on top of it instead and well Oscar's dialing in on these enemy tanks it's lining them up T3485 first target oh he fired a round in it was a heat round and he wiped that guy out with one shot now the heat rounds do have much better penetration, they've got 1 in 4 millimeters, but you have to get a direct hit in order for them to work and they only do 350 alpha. He's going for it with another premium round. And it hit, but it didn't pen. Okay, that VK was tracked and he's now out of the game anyway. Well he's still loading the premium rounds, he's, it's going to cost him a lot this game. Fires at the Hetzer, makes an expensive hole in the ground. He's indicating target, which is good because it tells your teammates where you're going for so that they don't duplicate the effort. Unfortunately, that shell landed just behind the M3 Lee who moved forward. Matrix like to avoid the shell. I go for the KV2, it's a much more predictable target. Rounds out, looks good. It did hit the target, but it hit at an angle which didn't allow it to pen. Now that's a very difficult target to hit. It's only at the top of the vehicle, but he does hit it, and he's out the game as well. So that's twice he's actually got a direct hit on an enemy target that's wiped it out. Oh, and he just hit that T-34 with a direct hit as well, but it didn't kill him. Now it's, it's obvious to me that Oscar likes playing with the premium rounds but it's going to cost him a lot because those premium rounds are very expensive it's also fairly obvious that his team have not bothered to actually cover the southern pass which means the enemy is getting a free ride all the way through that area and they will be coming up to the cap shortly he's dialing in on the kv2 sitting up there imperiously he's fired his gun rounds out oh engine bay it did get a critical hit, so it probably hit the tracks more than anything else. He's letting it dial in before he shoots again. Rounds out. And that was a direct hit. And I suspect he did do some damage. Yes, he tracked the guy back then because uh, he got 96 hit points of damage assist from tracking. The enemy RT has been spotted, but he's just too far away to shoot at. So he's trying to find other targets that he can hit, and unfortunately at the moment, the only one he can hit is this Panzerceps Fader Fear B, the Grasshopper. And he wipes him out with one round as well. <laughs> so he obviously does like firing the premium ammo, and he's rather good at it. Now that grill has actually come down from the cap area, and is actually trying to come around behind the VK-3001P. That's back when it was a, a medium tank, not... A heavy tank as it is now and it looks like the Panzer 4D was the one who got the kill so we're one tank down on the enemy at the moment but it's fairly interesting game and it could get even more interesting very shortly because it looks like the enemy is going to be coming from the southern pass and it's going to be a KV-2 and a T-34 coming in and there's the T-34 he's already appeared now Oscar does have some HE rounds only 13. It's very unusual to see people with this many premium rounds. I guess he likes the effect. T-34 
T-34 has not come up yet, so there's nothing he can do, but he can hit this KV-1. Although he's side on to us. It looks like he just got hit by the birch gun. And that's an expensive hole in the ground. Rounds out. And again, KV-1 dodges the shell. Right, KV-2 is getting rather close now. And he needs to do something about this guy. Otherwise, he's going to end up getting killed. Come on, you need to pen this guy. He's lost sight of him. Fire's blind. Looks like he hit him, though. Yeah, he might have to retreat. It's the sign to pull back a bit, because, yes, he is in range of that KV-2. Trouble is, it's a bit difficult for him to retreat with that giant rock in the way. He's actually trying to get round so he can hit the guy with an aimed shot from behind the bush. Using the bush mechanic. Note that first one missed. Okay, he might be able to get this. If he can hit the side of the vehicle, it might do it. Oh, he did it with a, a blind shot in the end. Now there's only uh, there's only uh, five left on his team, and there's still eight enemies out there. So they are badly losing this one, I'm afraid. And we've just well, we just took out the T34. He's got four kills now. Going for another. Rabs out on the KV1. No expensive hole. Try to get the KV-1 into the rear deck, into the engine deck. Yes! So he's got his fifth kill. Can he take it to a top gun? KV-1S just saw his buddy blow up. And now he's done the same. In fact, that was an ammo rack. Blew the turret clean off. He was only supposed to blow the doors off, though. Yeah, in a little in-joke, that. <laughs> Yes, uh, the Italian job. Oh, another kill! That's seven! He just not got another blind kill, but they've now got an equal number of tanks on both sides. One more kill, he gets a Radley's. That OI. Oh, he's in tr tremendous danger, because the Marder with a 75mm gun, he managed to get a hit. But unfortunately, he died a moment later to the gorilla. And that means now that Oscar is going to have to move. In fact, he suddenly realized there's a T-82 HMC, which is an American Tier 4 RT, fairly clear close by. In fact, that's the one based on the Stuart tank. Never got accepted to production. Armed with a 105mm gun, like the, uh, like the Fifi. Like the leaf blower, but uh, it was never accepted. Rounds out. Oh, we got him. That's some Radleys. So that's three blind kills he's managed to get to get uh, to his Radleys. But now he's in a bit of a predicament because it's two Arties left versus a Stug Four and a Gorilla. And the Gorilla's quite a good player. So is the Stug Four driver. They both got multiple kills. Can't see where the Stug is. The Stug's behind that rock. Can he get this kill? Not at the moment, because the rock is in the way. He's getting really close, and he just loses the birch gun to the gorilla. So obviously the Stug was spotting, and if that means that if he gets spotted by the Stug, more than likely it's going to be an RT round coming at him. Oh, he just narrowly missed him. He's only got three heat rounds left. And he's just been hit by the Stug. He's about to receive an RT round. Yep. I predicted that, didn't I? <laughs> uh, sadly, this one is a loss. Not a lot he could do about that. Let's have a look at the third replay. In the last replay, we've got Malsin 17 of Clan Zolo, or ZLO. 
And I think it's a Polish clan because that's a Polish flag on the side of the PPM. Two marks of excellence on the barrel. Now this is the Fjords map. Again, it looks slightly different from the old version. And he's got, uh, he's in platoon with two medium tanks. The Panzer T-25s are from his, uh, his clan and they're up ahead. So he's going to be providing RT support for them. Now this map looked very different back then. And there were some places you can go on this map, but you can't go now, obviously. I remember some fairly interesting battles in this uh, on this map. Rounds out. Ooh. Close, but no cigar. AMX ELC is trying to make it down to that corner. To hide there. T-50 fires around in. No, hits the scenery, I think. I line up another one. And he goes up. You notice the explosions are very similar to the ones that Wargaming said they would introduce to liven up the game. Well, I'm afraid these are the very same explosions that they're actually putting in. So it's old graphics. It's the old game. He gets around into the Panzer T-25. Now he's actually loading a heat round. Rounds out. Oh, God. Well, he's got a kill. <laughs> that one was pretty final. It took the guy out completely. He's actually loading another heat round. Okay, I think he's going to go for that ELC. Bit of a waste of a, a, a heat round. I think, but oh! Well, it wasn't a waste because he actually penned the guy and killed him. Now, he's switched to HE now, which is probably wise because it's slightly cheaper. Well, a lot cheaper, actually. And you can see his platoon mates are actually making their way already round the other side of the hill but they're on their way to the, the enemy cap but I think they've stopped off to turn around and come back and attack the enemy in the rear and he's got another kill a KV-1S this time he was already badly damaged can he get around into this KV-1 yes 97 hit points low low damage the HE rounds on the VP are capable of 410 output. They can penetrate 53 millimeters of armor. And back then, it was fairly easy to get pens with RT. Yeah, another pen. 76 hit points off the KV-1, but he got a kill. So he's now up to four kills. Oh, he just got another one. He's taken out the M4. So he now has five kills. One third of the enemy team. And, uh, well, between them in the platoon, they've got eight kills altogether. Okay, there's another enemy coming down the hill. Wolverine. Again, it all looks so different, doesn't it? Just missed the Wolverine. Need another chance. Line him up. Work out where he's going. Rounds out. Looks good. Yes! Kill shot. 247. Now he's got a top gun. T-34 coming down, and he's bypassing the bishop, or at least he was looked like he was going to, but he's actually stopped, turned sideways, and going after the bishop, and he's ended up nearly almost going into the water. Bishop's trying to get a kill on him, runs out, hits him in the rear. Oh, bishop's been badly damaged, and the T-34 kills himself against the rocks. That was a bit embarrassing. Okay, we've got an enemy bishop up the other end of the map. Snapshot. And, oh, he gets a kill this time. Normally that doesn't happen, but that is seven kills. There's only two enemies left. An RT, which is a Griller, and a Stug 4. Unfortunately, he's not in a position to hit the Stug 4. And they're indicating the Griller might be in grid squares B1 or B2. That's what the others think. He lost both of his platoon mates, I'm afraid. They've both got wiped out. But uh, they between them, they've now got 10 kills. And, well, mousin has got seven, so he's one short of getting a Radleys. If he gets one of these enemies, he gets a Radleys. If he gets both of them, then the whole platoon ends up with a crucial contribution. Because they'll have 13 kills between them.
Now, is he in a position to hit those guys? Now, he stopped, turned around, and is getting ready to, to hit who's around that corner. He can see the stug. Or rather, they've seen the stug. Can he get the kill? Light it up. Rounds out. Looks good. Just misses him. It was um, into the ground behind him. One more chance. Because his teammates will get it otherwise. Rounds out. Yes! That's a Radley's. And that means now that... Uh, there's only one enemy remaining, the Griller, and if he can get that one, crucial contribution time. And this is when he gets quite thrilling. Oh, the Griller's around the other corner. And he just took out our Bishop. I don't know if he rammed him to death or shotgunned him in the face, but I think it was brutal or whatever it was, because it was a close range, and normally if you do that to a Bishop, and the bishop doesn't get some damage on you. It's well, it's almost unheard of. But he's gonna be he's the closest to the enemy, really. Technically speaking. The Panzer 4 3 4 is actually gonna have to come back. KV222 is very slow, and he's gonna have a tough time trying to get round the north pass or the east pass. So um I think this Panzer 3 4 or to let uh, Mousen take the lead. He's got better view range. And remember, it is an arty. He's also got more hit points. And here comes the gorilla. There he is. Now he's trying to wane. No, 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 don't try to wane. Try to go for the shotgun. Locks on. Misses with his first shot. Go for it on the aim shot. That's it. Ready? He, the Griller misses his dirt, but oh, Mousin doesn't, and that is a crucial contribution to win the game for his platoon. And here's the end of battle results, and in the first game on the airfield map, Rollman 92 of the WoW Clan managed to get an ace tanker in his Fifi. He also got a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He managed to get 22. And he got a Radley Walters medal for killing ace of the enemy vehicles, as well as a high caliber for dealing the most damage, a top gun for getting at least six kills. And because he took out both enemy RT, he ends up with a counter battery fire medal as well. Let's have a look at the uh, team score. There you go, highest damage, 1,960 hit points. The next high scorer, less than half of his hit points, and that was the T1 heavy tank with 918, followed by the Sav M43 with 782. He had the highest number of kills. The next highest scorer had one quarter of the number of kills that he did. Uh, he managed to get eight, the OI Experimental managed two, the Skoda T24 managed two, and so did the T28E with the F30 gun. When it came to base XP, he managed to get 991, whereas the T1 Heavy managed 734, and 693 went to the OI Experimental. He got the top in all three columns. He fired 23 rounds in that game, nine direct hits and nine penetrations. Remember what I said about penning back then? It was a lot easier. Uh, Wargaming deliberately nerfed RT so that they don't pen as much as they used to. Even uh, uh, the Fifi nowadays won't pen as much as um, uh, you back then. It really did pen a lot. Seven splash damage. 1,960 hit points of damage, all of it done at more than 300 meters. He damaged 10 of the enemy, killed 8, did 246 hit points of damage assist. On a premium count, he earned 45,419 credits, and after ammo, resupply, and consumables, and he fired only HE, he ended up with 22,475 credits profit. He earned 1,487 XP, 744 from personal missions payout and 595 because this was a premium vehicle and took away 2,826 experience points altogether. He said this was an easy fight and I noticed that he was dialing in very, very quickly on the enemy. He must have a very good crew and I suspect he's also got a very large number of games in the Fifi. But it just goes to show that the, the more time you spend in these RTs, the, the quicker you get to dial in and the faster you get to the medals. Let's have a look at the second replay. That was uh, Oscar. Uh, I wasn't going to pronounce his other name, Krizu Oster, um, on the uh, Karelia map. Unfortunately, he lost his game, but he did get a first class tanker. He got a demolition expert because he blew up one of the enemy tanks. I think that was the, uh, was it the KV? 
one of the uh, KV tanks up in the corner, I think it may have been the KV-1S, or, well, it was one of them anyway, blew them up in the corner. He also got a Radley Waters medal for getting at least eight kills, a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game, and a top gun for getting at least six kills. Sadly, I'm afraid it was a loss, but he did get the highest damage, and that was 1,905 hit points. The second highest damage was the guy who killed him, 1,535 went to the gorilla, and 1,181 went to the KB-2 on the enemy team. He got quite close to the cap before he was taken out by a blind shot from Oscar. When it came to kills, it was Oscar who came out on top with eight. The next high score only had half of that, and that was the gorilla, but one of those was Oscar. Four kills to him, three kills for the Stug, uh, um, four as well. And when it came to base XP, it's the enemy who did the best here. The Gorilla got 893, the Stug managed to get 772, and then the KV2 managed 676, uh, yeah, 676. And then we've got Oscar with 547, so it wasn't too far behind uh, fourth place on the XP. He fired 26 rounds in that game, 15 direct hits and 9 penetrations. Uh, he was firing mostly heat, as you remember. Damage of 1,905 hit points, of which 1,408 were at more than 300 meters. He received three hits from the enemy, two penetrations, one non-penetration, and nine enemy vehicles damaged, eight killed, 96 hit points of damage assistance. On a free player count, he earned 24,823 credits from the game, and he got 4,050 credits because he got the achievements award that's for getting um, a battle hero medal or an epic medal in a losing or drawn game he got both sorts he got an epic in the form of the radley waters he got a battle hero in the form of the high caliber and the top gun his total came to 28,875 credits but i think you'll notice here that is the heavy cost of firing so much heat 104,000 spent on ammo alone which meant that he ended up with a loss of 96,766 credits for the game. Fifth, 547 XP, base XP, 319 for the Achievements Award here, 346 for being a premium vehicle, and took away 1,212 experience points altogether. So, yes, it's very expensive firing premium rounds in the Fifi and the left Leaf Blower, so it's probably best only to keep a few as a premium rounds against the heavy tank that's bearing down on you. If we look at the third game, that was even better. And that was Malsin, 17, in the Fifi on Fjords. He got an ace tanker in that game. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 17. He got a gorse medal because he did more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points to his own vehicle. He got a... A Radley Waters medal for killing at least eight enemy tanks. He got nine in the end. And because his platoon mates managed to get three kills between them, combined they had nine kills. Uh, they had 12 kills, rather. Uh, not the 13, which I originally mentioned. Uh, 12 kills in total, which meant, obviously, they got a crucial contribution for being a platoon and managed to get 12 kills altogether. Counter-battery fire medal. He took out both enemy RT in that game, the Gorilla, and he got the, um, uh, the Bishop. And he got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game and a top gun for getting at least six kills. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he easily got the highest damage with 2,099 hit points. The next high scorer managed uh, only half of that. And that was the T25 on his platoon who got 1,040. And the other platoon member, uh, well, where was he? There he is. Uh, he got 671 in that game. When it came to kills, he had the highest number with nine. The next high scorer only had a third of that, and that was the gorilla on the enemy team. He's got three kills, two kills to his platoon mate, and also to the Panzerkampfwagen via Ausrung H on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, again, he's got the highest with 1,021, so he's got the tops in all three columns. 845 went to the Churchill 3, and 641 went to one of his platoon mates, Spiker. And the other one, AOI, I'm not sure, I <laughs> won't pronounce the rest of it. Let's have a look at detail. He only fired 20 rounds in this game, but he got 13 direct hits and 13 penetrations and one splash. Damage of 2,099 hit points, of which 1,859 were at more than 300 meters. He damaged 10 of the enemy, killed 9. And on a premium count, he earned 46,253 credits. And after ammunition respawn, fairly cheap, but he did fire a few premium rounds, he ended up with 32,077 credits profit. 
1532 XP times two for the first victory at 613 for this being a premium vehicle and 31 for playing in the platoon right from the very start before he entered the battle and 3708 experience points altogether that was a very good performance it's a pity he couldn't get a pulse medal he wasn't able to because there wasn't enough enemies left for him to kill but it's a, a great performance when you ever get that combination of medals you really are rocking it so well done mouse in 17. I hope you enjoyed all three of those replays. If you did, please give the video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.